Okay. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Have you ever gone someplace really dark and looked up at the night sky? If you stare long enough, the stars seem to come alive. Back before we had things like television and the internet, stargazing was a major form of entertainment. And people would make up, make up stories to go along with what they saw, ancient soap operas populated with mythological figures. Most of us are familiar with the Greek zodiac. Uh, you probably know if you are a Cancer or a Virgo, for example. But the Greeks were not the only culture to see those 12 constellations pass across the night sky. The Chinese also saw them, named them, and made up stories of their own from their own mythology to go along with them. In this brief overview of these two different zodiacs, I will be covering three main points. First, I will talk about the historical and mythological origins of these two systems. Then I'll talk about the different ways in which they organize and divide their signs. And finally, talk about what signs these two systems have in common and the different traits each culture ascribes to them. So let's start with origin. Uh, practically, the Greek zodiac was first organized by Ptolemy in his Tetrabiblos, published in 150 AD. In mythological terms, it was Zeus who was responsible for the constellations. Taurus was placed in the sky in remembrance of the tale of Europa and the bull, in which Zeus turned himself into a white bull to seduce the beautiful Europa. Leo earned a place in the sky by doing battle with the hero Hercules. Now, the Chinese zodiac probably predates the Greek one, going back at least to the Han Dynasty in 206 BC. Uh, in most versions of the story, it was Buddha who was responsible for the constellations. He held a race to see what animals would earn a place in the sky. The first 12 to make it across the finish line on the other side of a river earned their place. The order in which the animals finished has a lot to do with the traits the Chinese ascribe to them. For example, the rat finished first, despite his diminutive size, by tricking the ox into giving him a ride across the river on his back. Now, the dragon should have finished first, but he actually came in fifth because he stopped to help the rabbit cross the river. So let's take a look at the different ways these two systems divide and organize their signs. Uh, the Greek system is organized by the month. For example, Mom, born on July the 1st, is a Cancer. Uh, cancer goes from June the 22nd to July the 22nd. Now, I was born on April the 22nd, and that makes me a Taurus. A Taurus goes from April the 21st to May the 20th. Now, the Chinese zodiac is organized on a 12-year cycle. Uh, if you use our previous examples, Mom was born in 1951, making her a rabbit, because that was one of the years of the rabbit. And I am an ox, born in 1985, one of the years of the ox. Now, the website wisegeek.com reminds us that when trying to calculate your Chinese zodiac sign, to remember that the Chinese zodiac uses a lunar calendar rather than our Roman calendar. For example, had I been born uh, before February the 20th in 1985, I would have been a rat rather than an ox. So let's talk about the signs these two systems have in common and the different traits they ascribe to them. Out of the 24 signs in these two zodiacs, there are only three that appear in both. The Greek system has Aries the ram, Leo the lion, and Taurus the bull. And their counterparts in the Chinese system are the sheep, the tiger, and the ox. Sometimes the two cultures agree on the traits. For example, an Aries and a sheep are both considered confident. Other times they directly conflict. Uh, Leos are considered generous and a tiger is considered selfish. And other times the traits complement one another. For example, a Taurus is patient and an ox gentle. Two things that go hand in hand. Now, to pull all of this together, I find it fascinating that two cultures can look up at the same sky and see the same stars and come up with such vastly different methods of explaining them to themselves. We here in the United States may be familiar with the Greek zodiac, but maybe not so with the Chinese. In this overview, I have discussed three main points about both. Uh, first, we went over the historical and mythological origins of these two zodiacs. Then we talked about the different ways in which each divide and organize their signs, and then we discussed the signs they have in common and different traits each ascribe to them. I hope that this presentation has shown that while there is some overlap, each of these zodiacs offers a unique look at the stars we see overhead. Do I have any questions?
Yes. What does zodiac mean? Well, zodiac comes from the Greek that literally means circle of animals, as you can see in these two wheels. Hmm. Okay, I have a question. You mentioned that the Chinese use the lunar calendar uh, instead of the Roman calendar. Can you explain that a little bit? Oh, in the Roman calendar, which we use, the new year is on a static day. It's on January the 1st. In the lunar calendar, it depends on the phase of the moon, so the start of the year is usually in February sometime. Okay, and I'd like to know um, if I wanted to find out what my Chinese zodiac sign was, how would you go about doing that? Well, there are websites that you can look up on the internet, and there are also numerous books available on the subject. Oh, okay. Alright, and let's do our numbers again. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. That's it. Yay. Okay. All right. Get out.